Hi. Hi, everybody. How's it going? Really good. Ready for another week of tuxedo on seminar. Heck yeah. Um, how has your week been? Uh, oh, I'm so see. sorry. We're not doing banter today because we have a lot of live <laughs> coding to do. <laughs> Y'all, he, he, he messaged me just a little bit ago. He's like, we have so much content to get through and my teacher is coming out. It's time just to dive in. So let's do it. Uh, folks, let's just say hello to people in the chat. Crypto Kareem. Hello, El Rel. Thank you so much for joining us today. Let's get the chat going lively today. Let's see how many tangents we can get Joshy on. <laughs> no yeah, I can hear goal <laughs> derail me. <laughs> <laughs> Andrew's probably out there. He's going to be trolling us the whole time. <laughs> uh, and we're actually streaming live to Twitter and to YouTube today in addition to uh, Twitch. So I am curious to see if I can keep up with all the different chats. If they come into one place, I'm not sure. Um, and if I have a plugin correctly installed to see if they're all actually they do. Yeah. La Vida No S515 Y30. What a name. Hello. I think you just commented via YouTube so I can see them all coming in. That's incredible. All right. Let's yeah, freaking do this cool. then. This is let's, pro yeah. production quality. Very good. I mean, hello. Okay. Let's, this is awesome. I'm so happy you're all here. Um, UTXO, catch us up. We did. We yeah. talked about this last week, but for folks who are new watching the stream, yeah. can, can I get a quick summary before we dive in? Yeah, and let me absolutely. know when you want me to bring up your um your screen share. Yep, I'm I'm uh, here. Let me put something good on the screen, and then Sick. yeah, whenever. So Forget okay, it. so Andrew and I wrote this uh, project. We're writing it actually. It's still in active development. Um, called Tuxedo, which brings UTXOs to Substrate. So typically a substrate runtime is built with this toolkit called Frame, which is accounts based. And so now we've added a second toolkit to the menu. So when you're writing your runtime, you can choose Frame or you can choose Tuxedo. And the main difference is that Tuxedo is UTXO based. So think about chains like Cardano or Monero or Bitcoin itself, where all UTX are all UTXO based, um, right, as right. opposed to accounts, which is like Polkadot and Ethereum and most Cosmos chains and et cetera. And so if someone is in that moment when kind of brainstorming at the beginning, they have to make that choice or they get. I'm sorry, have to, they get to make that choice between a UTXO <laughs> model or the account, right? That's like what we're encouraging folks to really be thinking about it, knowing their use case and to thoughtfully decide. Yeah, yep, exactly right. And I'll, the, there are some rules of thumb. So like if you're trying to do anything privacy related, mm -hmm. UTXOs is probably a better place to look first. Okay. Um, if you're trying to do something that's compatible with something like Ethereum in some meaningful way, like I used to work at Moonbeam, that's why this came to mind. Ethereum sure. is accounts based. You definitely want to go accounts based there. Um, there's a, there's a, it, it, you know, I guess I would say uh, it's worth trying both and getting familiar with both and seeing if idea. you can think in both paradigms, because I've really found that I like thinking in the UTXO paradigm. And um, if it comes naturally, then maybe tuxedos for you, if not, maybe frames for you, or maybe your application actually dictates one or the other. And so today, the example that I'm going to be building is the example that we talked about last week, which is a yep. decentralized exchange. And so um, there's lots of those out there in the blockchain space. And sure. many of them on Ethereum are like, uh, they use this technique called like automated market makers. And yeah, an is a, yes, exactly. Yep. And um, that's a technique that's really well suited for use in an accounts based system. And it's actually um, it requires engineering around some kind of uh, problematic edge cases. If you try to build that in the UTXO model, there's actually some teams on Cardano that have like solved that problem in the last year or two. Okay. So it's not super well suited for the UTXO model. Today, what we're going to build is an order book based DEX, which is likely what you've encountered if you ever used like a centralized exchange. And okay. an order book is actually really well suited for UTXOs and um, not as well suited for accounts. So a lot of times your application will kind of like lead you in one direction or the other. And it's not usually the case that it's like impossible to, to build like, you know, in the other. Or like direction. clear cut. Right. Like it's yeah. not going to you get to decide in that regard. And so yeah. can I just reframe it in, for my mind right now? Like UTXO yeah. versus frame is what's happening. And then also AMM versus order book. Yeah, exactly right. Yep. So we're going to be using UTXOs, Tuxedo in particular, and we're going to be building an order book. Yep. And then um, I'm sure it's out there somewhere in the substrate ecosystem. There's got to be an AMM palette written yep. with frame, sure. which would be sort of like the account approach. 
that if things are making sense, like we get the language that we're using, we feel good. Let's, are we ready to dive into the code or do you need us to cover more? Because hopefully I'm ready. Yeah, I'm ready. We can, yeah, we can so link that week's you show for do. fundamentals. Yeah. We had uh, a lot of good slides there last week. Exactly. So, yeah. 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 I would say let's dive into the code if that's okay with you, Lauren, and feel free sure. to bring it back to conceptuals <laughs> at any point. No, 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 no. It's okay. <laughs> um, yeah. Folks feel ready. Let's do it. Right. I don't see anyone um, my... throwing a fuss in the chat, so we're good. Cool. Is my screen share up? Can people see it my is. Yeah, yeah. I can see your, right, the template is what you have open. Yep, exactly. So this is the tuxedo repo here, and it looks a lot, uh, hopefully pretty familiar. We have like a, a node. This is uh, basically almost entirely copy pasted from the substrate node template. I think we mm -hmm. changed a total of like two lines in the chain spec file. And then we have tuxedo core, which is what Andrew and I have written. And we're not going to uh, be modifying that in any way today um, because, you know, downstream developers would not be expected to modify tuxedo core, just like they're not expected to modify frame and just get to use it. Exactly. And so yep. we're going to dive into the runtime today. Okay. And this is the link that we've included, or this is, if you want to be following along, take a look at the runtime template, grab it. Yep, Go exactly. And I'll, at the same time, I'll just say that our GitHub is here. It's um, off narrative labs slash tuxedo. So this is actually Ooh. the repo that I was showing you guys. Yep. You know, I want to dive into the story of off narrative, but we won't. No chat. No chat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a good name. That's you can you can link that in last week's show. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So. Okay, so here we have a librs file. So this is a template okay. runtime, basically. And our goal in the, you know, soon in the midterm, I'd say is to make this um, minimal and like strip out all the pieces we don't need, just like yeah. the frame template is. For now, it also has like all of these proof of concept pieces that Andrew have been working on. So we have a proof of existence one, just like there is in frame. We have a Love. crypto kitties like game. Yeah, um, we have a cryptocurrency. This is the probably the only one that's a, pretty close to production ready at this point okay. uh, is the the money piece. But the, the others are very good for learning and, and getting closer all the time. So today we're going to build a DEX and it's actually going to couple with this money piece. You can imagine if we have a DEX, we're going to want some tokens that we want to trade on that DEX. Yep. And this is, um, I would say, in some ways analogous to palette balances. And one mm -hmm. way in which it's analogous is that it's sort of instantiable. You can use this piece multiple sure. times in the same runtime. So I'm going to use it twice to put two tokens in our runtime. Okay, that makes sense to me. Yeah, cool. And then there's this one trait here. It's called cash. And cash is basically a trait. Uh, here, I can uh, actually go to the docs. So here's our built Rust docs. I think um, you guys might have that link too. Let's see. I was going to look for this cash trait. Andrew says, so here it is. Cash. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of, <laughs> it's similar to like um, the currency trait in the, in exactly. the frame world, but it's a little so different. We're, we're coming up yeah, with all of these comparisons, right? So if someone's taking notes, like we, we have created a table of things that we are one for one almost if you will that's right yeah whoever writes these down and makes a pr for our docs that's uh that's a value yeah add. like a visual note taker mm, yep and you'll also docs. be the first person that isn't me or andrew to have your contributor badge here so please do add this oh, table heck, analogy. yeah look at that lonely too let's get it's some probably more gonna be lauren <laughs> yeah so okay so it, currency is very much accounts based with the currency okay. trait you can do things like say here's an account hey trait please tell me uh like the balance of this account but with this cash trait it's way more based on like tokens or bills so there's no calling this trait and saying like here's my address please tell me how much money i have instead what you do is you you call this trait and you say like here's a coin or a bank note or whatever tell me how much it's worth and so that's what this this value function does okay okay Yep. And I'd say the only other thing in this trait is a currency ID. So we're going to have two tokens. They're going to be IDs zero and one. And so that's how we just tell what token we're dealing with. Perfect. So, okay. So there we go. Okay. That's a quick overview of this money piece and the cash trait through which we're going to use it. And so now we're going to actually start writing our decks. Um, and so, like I said, at the moment, we're just putting all these pieces right here in the runtime. And so I'll just make a, oops, not a new folder, a new file. I'm gonna start from scratch. I love it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, there it is. Wow, the the total. The blank page. Right. Yeah. 
<laughs> exactly. Well, let's start with some comments. Um, we'll just make like an order book decentralized exchange uh, between two specific tokens. So it's entirely possible to write a little bit fancier decks where people can trade arbitrary tokens, or you can even do fancy stuff where you say like, I'll trade you two wheat and one sheep for one brick sure. or something, you know, where you have like more than two tokens, but for uh, one hour of coding, we better yeah, stick let's, to like- Yeah, let's uh... keep it simple for a demo. <laughs> like we know yeah. where we can go. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah, the sky, yeah. sky's the limit, just like, just like with frame. Absolutely. Um, Okay, so we're going to need some imports, and I'll definitely have to add to these later because I won't be able to think of them all right now. But um, oh, like, we can at least game, get some. Yeah, the the most common ones, and probably the ones I remember are the ones that are like most ubiquitous. And then we'll bring yeah. in some others that are more like deck specific. So I use <laughs> SPS CD Prelude like a lot. That gives you a lot of convenient stuff. Vec, I know we're going to need out of there, mm -hmm. and then um, so uh, oh, we're going to need to scale and code stuff encode whoops and decode Oops. oh coax 1d thanks for the follow appreciate you <laughs> <laughs> that's andrew <laughs> yeah thanks appreciate oh yeah it. yeah I, I just uh always want to say thanks when people say say they want to watch us each week yeah so okay from tuxedo core this is where the interesting we're like more um yeah. Stuff to learn about exists. Exactly. So Thanks for talking, we have this insure macro, which is okay. very much like the one from Frame. I suggested to the Substrate devs we should move some general support stuff like this to a more... It, it, the one in Frame lives in Frame support, but it's actually not a Frame-specific macro at all. Mm -hmm. um, Pull it but out. They, yeah, but they said, like, it's a small macro and we don't have a better place, so just make your own macro. So we did. We just copied the 12 lines of code or whatever, so okay. we have the same one. Um, okay, more more to the point. Here's this cash trait that we're going to use. And Aaron uh, we'll... Dev, thank you for the follow. Are you kidding me? <laughs> You're just following. What's <laughs> happening, folks? <laughs> Keep going. Sorry, I just yeah. saw that notification. <gasps> oh my goodness. We, okay, we'll output. Need, All right. Yep, we'll need the output type. So this is in, this is basically a UTXO. So UTXO stands for unspent transaction output. So this is one of them. We're going to read these from storage. Or, well, I we won't directly be interacting with storage. Tuxedo Core does that for us. But we'll be given outputs that were pulled from storage and we'll create new outputs that we're going to put back into storage. Got so it. that's an important type. And then here's yeah, the ones that sure. we're going to be implementing. So we said last time when you develop on top of Tuxedo, your main job is to implement these two traits. So one is constraint checker. Um, and today we'll start actually with the simple constraint checker, which okay. uh, is a little bit less expressive, but in many cases able to express everything you need. And so for the purpose of making orders, we're going to use the simple constraint checker. And then later when it gets to matching orders, then we'll use the full featured constraint checker. I'll bring okay, that cool. in at the time. And the other one um, is verifier. And we're not actually going to create any new implementations of this verifier trait. This is the thing that allows you to like spend an output. So the most common one is sig check. Like I can spend yep. this coin if my signature checks out. Um, so we're not going to add any new verifiers ourselves, but we're going to use verifier as uh, trait bound on a generic check. type. Yeah. yeah. And so the reason that we do that is because when I make an order, when I put in an order to this book that says, hey, I'll trade you like 10 Joshi coins for like five Lauren coins, because of course your token would be more highly valued than mine. Mm -hmm. um, I need to say that like if this order matches and I get a payout when I get my five mm -hmm. Lauren coins, they need to be protected somehow. And I want them to be protected by this particular verifier, probably my signature check, but could Got be it. anything okay. like a multi-sig or uh, whatever. Okay. Uh, okay, so great. The uses are done. Let's uh, sort of sketch out our main data types here and then uh, go from there. Okay. So the, Folks, this is an order book. Thing in the chat. I really appreciate you. Thanks for being here, casual user. <laughs> we're we're going to need an order type. So okay. I'll just call this like, um, or I, I like to write some docs as we go just to kind of make sure people are thinking on the same page. It also kind of like 
guides my own thinking to, to write yeah. this stuff out. So this I is think basically- it's a pseudo code. It's you being a good teacher. It's you being a good developer for future devs to be able to understand what's happening. All good practices and things I love to see. Yeah. Thanks. Cool. You're Glad right. we're on the same page. <laughs> <laughs> Just be like, cool. <laughs> Oh my gosh, even good grammar? Goodness, folks. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Wow. Yeah, you used to be an English teacher, right? So Yeah, so ooh. it just really it's, speaks to me. It's, <laughs> it's good when an English teacher likes your comments. That's great. Right. <laughs> um, so an order basically has three things. It has uh, like the offer amount, the 10 Joshi coins. So like um, the amount of tokens I'm willing to trade away. Or I'll even okay. say like of to- token A. Um, and we'll just call this like, that's the offer, offer you said okay yeah yep exactly um we're using u128 for our balance types one okay. of the things that we've tried to do in tuxedo is not be too generic until there's a reason to be sure. that generic so in frame uh, one complaint i've heard is that the trait bounds and abstraction makes it a little hard and we are gonna uh, unfortunately it's a little bit unavoidable so we're gonna have some of that today too but we're doing our best to not have like an abstract balance type just to make this like a little easier to follow Works yeah. for me. so the amount of token b uh i demand to receive so this we'll call this like the ask amount so like i'm asking yeah. for you know however many coins uh, okay, and then the final thing that I would say is probably the least obvious, like those two are probably pretty obvious, um, mm-hmm. but the last one isn't as obvious. This is going to be the the payout verifier. Uh, Which is, okay. So the payout verifier is what I was talking about earlier, which is the thing Mm, that mm -hmm. if my order is matched and I get these, for example, like five Lauren coins, this is the thing that's going to protect it. This is the logic that's going to say, don't let those coins be spent until Joshi sends for it. Got it. Uh, so I'll just call this like the verifier. Oh, that's super Maybe. important, huh? Okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Because so if we don't have this here, if I don't get to specify yep. the payout verifier when I'm making my order, if I just specify these, then I make my order, someone comes along and sees my order and matches it yep. with some other order. 100%. And then these five Lauren coins that I was supposed to get, they go to like wherever the matcher chooses. And we can't have that. Wow. We have to make sure that the matcher pays them to the parties wow. that were actually involved in the trade. Because every user is an attacker. Okay, yeah, got exactly. it. <laughs> hey, Vito, thank uh, you for the follow. Appreciate you. All right, so okay. that's our... Oh, cool. and so I use the generic type type V, so we have to put that up here. Yeah. This is why I brought in the verifier trait. All right, so that looks pretty good. I, I guess I'll just warn you at this moment, like um, mm-hmm. to do more generics are going to go here shortly. Okay. And the reason is because I haven't... Um, specified in any way what tokens these are. Like in the comment, mm-hmm. I said token A, but we're not actually specifying those right. types anywhere. And we know we want these to be two different implementers of that cash trait. So we're exactly. going to have generics to go here for that. But okay. before I go like super deep into like trait bound hell, I want to kind of sketch out the structure that this DEX is going to take. Let's do it. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Um, so this is going to be very similar to frame. We need this like uh, pub enum dex error. So you can call it whatever you want. I'm going to call it dex error. And this is basically uh, anything that can go wrong or like uh, make a transaction invalid Yep. when uh, using a dex. And I'm not even going to put any variants in there right now. We'll, we'll fill those in as we encounter them. Okay, I like that. Sure, but we yeah, we we know there's going to be some notion of an error, and that's very similar to your like your your palette error basically. So the next thing, okay, so now we're up to our two constraint checkers. We're going to have mm-hmm. two different types of transactions related to the decks that you can submit. So if this were frame, you could think of that as like we would have two different functions in our palette call um, implementation. So I'm going to call these make order and match orders okay how do you spell struct there we go <laughs> so make there's order nothing like you... live coding and people in the chat being like you spelled it wrong <laughs> yeah yeah exactly <laughs> typo <laughs> make order is what you call when you want to place an order in the book place sure. a new order in the book That's so that one's start. 
Yeah, exactly. That's like critical to make this thing practical, but um, mm -hmm. not where like the most interesting logic happens. No. And then the other one will allow us to match two or more. So we're not going to require that um, exactly two users come together and have perfectly opposite trades because mm -hmm. that's quite unlikely. We're going to allow to match multiple orders together. And what that means is, for example, like maybe Alice wants to trade one A for two B and yep. Bob also wants to trade one A for two B. And, you know, they're, they're making the same offer. They can't trade with each other. They're both looking to get some. Exactly. B. And then some third actor, Charlie comes along and says, I'll take both of those. I'll give mm. you guys your two A and take all four B so we can match all three of those orders or you nice. know, arbitrarily many orders together in a, in a single match. So that's sort of like the the one way in which we're going to get fancy in this. Demo. I was going to say, so that sounds a little bit more complex than the example we talked about last week. And so it, it is this highlighting something in particular to match these three together um, feature functionality wise that we like are choosing. Yeah, I think, you know, we, we talked about how um, we're not going to allow these transactions with like three mm. different kinds of coins or whatever. Okay, so back this to. is basically like the the one thing that I'm mm -hmm. uh, allowing to get a little bit more real world and not just be like a, a toy where we're allowing to. So, for example, like we could take it Got even it. one step farther. It's actually not real world yet. We could allow like partial matches. You know, we could say like... Um, uh, maybe I offered like 100 A for 200 B. So I have like mm -hmm. a lot, hundreds of tokens, like kind of a lot. And someone comes along and says like, um, you know, I want to be at, uh, I'll pay one A. And that's actually like that's the same true. ratio. That's the same price that I was asking. It's just a much smaller order. Right. So in the real world, they would allow like a partial match where this person gets matched and my order just like decreases in size a little bit. But we're um, not we're worrying not about that today. Do okay. that today. Yeah. Got so we're choosing this like semi semi realistic thing sure. by allowing two or more orders. I'll allow it. All right, cool. <laughs> um so and but yeah, by the way, all of these things are great things, uh great spots for people to start learning if you follow this video and say, like, okay, I think I kind of got that, but and then you, know, you never that. really get it. Yes, yeah. exactly. You never really get that. it until you can hack on top of it. So mm -hmm. all right match orders and so this one's plural because you have to have multiple orders come together to get a match on yeah mm -hmm. and this one's singular because we'll make them one at a time um okay cool well let's i guess let's see if that compiles and then if it does we'll check it in and we'll keep rolling um this okay. so i'm back in the lib file now this is like the main runtime file so i just have to do a few Hold little in. changes here yeah exactly great pub mod decks and then oh i'll do this too i really like to cargo format um, because it even does little things like make sure I put that in the right spot alphabetically. And fix it for you. Yeah. And then so in frame, you would have to go down here and find your construct runtime macro. Yep. And in tuxedo, what you do is you find the uh, tuxedo constraint checker macro. Okay. So there's, we talked about there's two traits, verifier and constraint checker. Here's yep. where you aggregate those together. So we say, Here's all of the different verifiers that are going to be valid in the runtime. This is the simple signature check one I keep talking about. This yeah. is a multi-sig, um, which is sort of similar, but more flexible. And then this is like a free-for-all. This is Up a, for um, grabs. I love that. Yeah, yeah <laughs> not protected at, at all. Um, oh, yeah. So we're, we're, we're not adding any new verifiers, but if we were, we would just put them in right here. But yeah. we are sure. adding um, some constraint checkers which is going to be, oh, these aren't going to, it, it actually won't compile yet because I didn't implement the trait yet. So I'll just do it mm -hmm. like this. This is where we're going to put it. So this is going to be like a dex make order and it would go to dex okay. and it has that struct make order. Um, and then the other one will be like a dex match orders. All right, so we'll, we'll enable those as soon as we have the traits implemented. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, so we haven't actually added anything to our runtime. We're just uh, mm -hmm. going to be able to compile this now. So let's see. Tuxedo. I do love that it feels so familiar, right? Like it does, it, it feels, it's just a its own version of it. And I, yeah, it's exactly what you were intending it to be. It's been really interesting writing this because mm -hmm, I bet. 
every time we have a decision, we we have to say like, okay, are we going to do this the way Frame does, or are we trying not to in be that Frame regard. here? Yeah, are we choosing and a different path? Oh man. Yeah, it really forces you to kind of like tease out like mm -hmm. what was which pieces of Frame were designed this way because that's like what you have to do to work with Substrate or to be a blockchain, and which mm -hmm. pieces were designed this way based on the accounts model. So ah, anything that was like fun. chosen Oof. because it was accounts better, we have to go the UTXO route. Exactly, but exactly. So, yeah, at first I was really making this error where I was saying like, okay, well, Frame does this. We better find like whatever is the opposite of that. Oh, interesting. Um, it doesn't need but, to be so, it's not yeah. contrarian. It's not for that reason yeah, at all. It's right. just for that's a different right. model. And so yeah. that's an interesting shift I imagine you had to take. Yeah, huh. Yeah. that's fun. Okay, so let's start to implement some uh, some of the necessary traits that we're going to need here. The first okay. thing is this thing order. This is a type that we're going to store inside of outputs. We're going to put them in UTXOs, which last week I described as like little envelopes in this big wall of cubbies. Yes, so the cubbies, wanna, yeah. Yeah, that's right. We want to be able to take an order and jam it in an envelope and put it in a cubby in the same way that we can with a, uh, with a coin, a, a okay. Bitcoin or a Joshi coin or whatever. Um, or a crypto kitty. And so in order to do that, we have to implement this particular trait. I think I brought this one in, but maybe not. Uh, it's called UTXO data. Oh, I forgot it. What a rookie. My editor will bring it in for me. Uh, we're going to implement it for this type order. And since order has a generic type, we have to do that also. Okay. And it only has this, doesn't have any methods. It just has this one um, constant. And it's, this is basically like a tag for this type. It's four unique bytes that when you pull this thing out of storage, you can deserialize it and know that it's going to be an order, not a coin or a crypto. Cool. Coin. So in many palettes, this is, or sorry, pieces, <laughs> <laughs> there's a frame word. <laughs> In, in many pieces, it's as simple as doing something like this. You just choose like four unique bytes. Like um, we use like yep. K-I-T-Y, I think, yep. for kitties and A-M-O-E for amoebas. Ours is going to be a little bit more complex than that. And you're going to see why once we fill in these generics. So I'm okay. not going to do it yet. I'm going to leave a comment because I actually want to let this sink in first because this is m sort of like more fundamental than whatever silly thing I'm about to do. To you're make the going to do. Work. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Uh, so I'll just say like to do uh, fix when we have generic coins. And the, the reason that we're going to have to fix it is, is this. These four bytes are a unique representative. Rep presentation of this type. They specify that this type's in order. Exactly. And if we add generics here, a, like A and B for our two tokens, that means we actually have a whole class of types, a whole bunch right. of different orders. We have like order Bitcoin Monero, and then we have like order ETH Doge. Um, right. And we can't have those types be getting confused when we write when we throw them into the cubby wall, when we write them into storage. We don't want to put a Monero order into storage and pull it back out later and treat it like an ETH order no, because no, no, the no. person yeah. who trades is going to be pissed that they got the wrong thing. <laughs> so, um, so that's why we have to make sure these bytes are unique once we add the generics. Got it. So, cool. Yeah. Good clarification. Yep. So that's one. And then the other trait is the one that I... Um, talked about for a while earlier, which is uh, this one called uh, simple constraint checker. Yep. For make order. And we'll, oh, whoops. Uh, what's going on? There we go. Uh, okay, so there's a type error. So, you know, any number of things can go wrong when we're checking these orders. Like, for example, I might try to make an order in which I say, I'll trade you 100 Bitcoin for whatever, but I don't actually put up 100 Bitcoin to back that, that would be an error. Mm -hmm. uh, speaking of which, so we, we can just build out the errors. The variant. Yeah. yeah. Uh, insufficient collateral. Mm -hmm. And just say, like, um, user is trying to make an order, an order, but is not. Yeah. So the trade will happen when this order gets matched with a counterparty's exactly. order later. Uh, hasn't put up enough collateral to back the ask price. Mm -hmm. uh, no, the offer price, offer amount. There we go. So they'll they'll be there'll be more of these, but that one popped okay. into my head. So yeah, um, yeah, oh, yeah. You, you're missing a T in the insufficient collateral. By the way, oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah, very good. Thanks. 
<laughs> Another one that we talked about was this one where mm -hmm. if you try to pull out the wrong type, if you try to pull out a Monero order and treat it like an ETH order. Um, so I'll just call that one like um, sure. uh, some output had a type that wasn't the expected type. And we'll call that one like uh, type error, I guess. It's like a good name. Sure. There'll, there'll be lots more. So <laughs> this is the error type that we're going to use right here, dex error. Yep. OK, so this is the only method that we have to implement. And mm -hmm. uh, since we're using the simple constraint checker, we only have to deal with dynamically typed data. OK, so that's another trait that I should have brought in because we don't need to read that full path. Mm -hmm. Um, that one goes right here. Okay. Dynamic typing. Smart. Let's see if that Got worked. It. Hopefully it worked. The compiler will tell us if not. And uh, that's annoying too. Let's just fix that. It'll, uh, it'll, the editor will help me import it when it realizes there's a problem, I think. So, <laughs> okay. okay. So, here's what we're going to do um, with, well, okay, hold on. Let me not get derailed into the logic yet. We got to, we got to sketch out our trade. Yeah, 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 yeah. We also want to make this thing a constraint checker. Yep. And like I said, this one is eventually, we're going to see this has to be the full constraint checker, but just to kind of get us started and get things compiling, we'll start with sure. this one. We'll use the same error type. It's perfectly valid to have, if you want to have like uh, two different error enums where you would mm -hmm. have like make order error and uh, match order error. I sure. happen to prefer not to do that. So yeah, keep it so, simple. Yeah. I, I don't think either one is like fundamentally better, but I like, yes, this one. Okay. So, all right, let's see if that compiles. I'm guessing not, but I just because I added a lot, but we'll let the compiler tell us. All right, mm. so we've got a couple things here. Oh, well, that one is dead simple. <laughs> <laughs> I, lo I love it when you know immediately. Yeah. <laughs> All right, what else? Transit. Okay, yep. So that's the thing that I deleted because okay, I so thought. We'll pull that in. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. No. Yep. So I, I should say a little bit about this actually too. So this is a, not a tuxedo specific type. This comes from no. SP runtime and it's also used in, in frame and any other, yeah. even if you write your runtime from scratch. So this is a value. I think it's actually just an alias right now to like U64 or something like that. It tells the transaction pool how important this transaction is. Like how much should I be trying to jam it into my next block? Sure. And the reason that we need it here is because it's up to each one of these uh, constraint checkers to return a transaction priority or an error if there's an if there's an error. Okay. So for today, we'll probably keep those at zero, but we can talk in uh, in theory about how you might prioritize, especially for match or orders. Them. Yeah, of course, yeah. that makes sense. Yeah. So that's why we needed that type. So all right, that was already a few things we fixed. Let's Good. see what we got. Um, oh, yeah. So we might be at the point now where we need to derive a whole. Yeah, exactly. So mm -hmm. this is probably a familiar error. Does anybody mm -hmm. know what I need to do in order to make this wrapper type decode thing go away? Oh, we're asking to the chat. Yeah, I'm sure you know. So we'll let the people in the chat see if anybody What's says. Up, um, it looks like every one of these errors is of this similar. Exactly. Kind. Yeah. Yeah. So. Okay, so we just need to derive a whole bunch of traits here. Specifically for that wrapper type decode one, we just need to derive decode. So instead of spending a bunch of time to uh, do each one of these, I just happen sure. to have this um, this uh, list of like... <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, yeah, bring them all. Commonly needed. Yeah, it's, we, Absolutely. we might not need each and every one of these, but you know, it's... Uh, gonna save us some effort to just exactly we're we're 35 minutes in let's just bring them we'll use them yeah, yeah. let me just Let say the compiler easy. can derive these faster than i can determine mm -hmm. which subset of them is needed needed yeah okay so what do we have oh type okay. info we don't want type info in here let's get rid of that mm -hmm. oh yeah some i grabbed one that had a little too many 
Let's see. Oh yeah, Ord and Portia Lord. We don't need. Let's try. Let's try that subset of types. All right, and then uh, we have. Oh, we're gonna probably need some of those on. How many of those did I paste? Just two of them. Three. Three of them. Okay. All right, I did it on my two constraint checkers, my error, mm -hmm. and we got to get this too. As someone who's trying to learn Rust or to learn how to use my Rust for blockchain mm -hmm. development, I really appreciate these streams. Of course. Uh, welcome oh, to great. the Rust for blockchain development. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, I think the conceptual stuff goes a really, really long way, mm -hmm. but sometimes it also helps to just see someone like go through the nitty gritty of it. Oh, and, uh, I even love it. Yeah. Commiserate with like, oh, I've had that error before. <laughs> Absolutely. And I think it feels like the steps in the ordering feel so helpful to watch. That for me was a big unlocking moment for me, like when building out a runtime and seeing, even just watching you do this now of like the order, you mapping it out and then saying okay i'm gonna go back i sometimes feel pressure to like have the logic i don't know i just almost immediately maybe and so it's really great to see that for me feels like oof big win yeah i i think for a lot of people this is their first time ever seeing a tuxedo piece so i think it's mm -hmm. valuable to see the general structure that we have like you know maybe some types that are gonna be stored in the cubby wall in the storage <laughs> Maybe yeah. uh, probably some notion of error and then like one or more of these constraint checkers, which is basically like your your palette calls. So and, and to know like what traits have to go on each what has to traits have to go on this type to actually make it a constraint checker. So all Andrew right, brings up see. a great point that stumbling is a part of the learning itself. And if you aren't, you are not challenging yourself. So I appreciate yeah. that. That's 100 percent true. And yeah, I think the moment that we're plateaued and bored, then <laughs> yeah, not interested so. anymore. <laughs> So that compiled. So I'm going to check Great. it in and I'm just going to call okay. it like um, sketch out structure of P Dex piece. Great. All right, cool. So that's that's somewhere. I probably should have made one commit earlier, but we're all we'll good to go. From here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. OK, so let's start uh, talking logic. We'll write some pseudo code here. So this is the one for making an order. And it's, um I would say, probably the easier of the two. More There's simple. just a few things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Uh, that we have to check. We don't have to, I think it's simpler to take one order and check its collateral as opposed to taking two orders and making sure, or more, and making sure that they sort of satisfy each other and, and sure. every trading partner will be able to get what they were asking in exchange for their trade. Got it. So I guess, first of all, we just need to make sure that there's a single output. Um, so there, so let's say like, there should be one output which mm. is the new order. Rust builds and, take a lot of time. How much CPU do you have? <laughs> uh, um, a lot more than I've ever had at any previous jobs. So I think <laughs> I have eight cores and 16 threads, but um, for Substrate specifically, I got the uh, high memory. So I think I have 64 gig of memory, which is like um, four times what I had at my previous jobs. So. <laughs> Yeah, it's heavy. Uh, okay, and so then the, so let me just re remind everybody about how a UTXO transaction works. Please. Maybe yes. by Thank you. Yeah. looking at uh, this transaction type. Okay. So there's essentially three things in here. There's a whole bunch of inputs, which is a whole bunch of data that you've pulled out of the cubby wall. There's a right. whole bunch of outputs, which are new things you're going to put back in. And mm -hmm. then there's the constraint checker, which is basically you specifying which piece of constraint checking logic is going to validate this one. So to give you an example of what a make order transaction would look like, it would have w one or more inputs, which are all coins. They're all coins that I'm going to put up as collateral to back my order. So if okay. I say I'm willing to trade away 10 Joshi coins in exchange for five Lauren coins, then I have to have a whole bunch of inputs or maybe it's just one maybe it's just one input that's worth 10 right. joshi coins or maybe it's two that are worth five and five and okay. then the output the only thing that would be added to the cubby wall after this is a new order that says i'm willing to trade my 10 for five okay and then in this 
checker field, this is where I specify, okay, this is a dex make order as opposed to like a coin transfer or a kitty breed or something like that. This is like analogous to specifying which uh, frame call you're, you're trying to use. Yeah. So the big difference with the UTXO model versus the accounts model is that in the accounts model, you typically would specify a call and maybe give some input data, but the frame runtime itself would calculate the final output that. state. Yeah. 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 Okay. Whereas here we're saying this is the final output that I want and I only need the on-chain logic to check whether these things are valid together. And I there talked a little bit There's the differentiation. Yeah, 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 yeah. Put that one, put that like, one let in. Let that the, sink in, folks, real. right? Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we're, we're not calculating final state on chain. It's being mm -hmm. supplied in the transaction and on chain is saying, yes, that's a valid final state. Mm -hmm. So you can actually have some specific kinds of non-determinism in your runtime because of this. So let's say that there's like uh, this thing called coin flip where it doesn't take any inputs and the only output is like the outcome of this coin flip it's mm -hmm. perfectly valid that you could flip a coin and get heads it's also perfectly valid that you could flip a coin and get tails right and so in the utxo model the transaction allows you to specify like this one came out as tails to tell now it. let me yeah exactly and so even though there's two possible both valid output states it's okay because the transaction says which one this one's going to land in. And all we have to do is make sure it's one of the possible valid states. Okay. So um, I, I don't want to give the impression that like what I just described there is a valid way to collect randomness because it's okay. not at all. Like it's a hundred percent gameable. I was just trying to make the point about uh, like, right. like non-determinism there. Okay. So, all okay. right. So let's, let's get back to it. So now that we know what a transaction looks like, what we're saying here is there should be, uh, oh, I didn't, uh, Oh yeah, there should be one output, which is the new order. And then there could be many inputs. There needs to be at least one uh, whose value sums to the uh, offer amount. Okay. And as long as that's true, then we're gonna say this is okay. And then we'll return a priority. And like I said, uh, this one can be- For now, zero. zero. Yeah, in, in reality, what you would do is maybe have like one more output, which is like a bribe or a tip to like the uh -huh. block producer or something. And then that, and that will that prioritize. Be, yeah, yeah, or that exactly. will determine. I love it. Yep, exactly. So we're not going to dive into the weeds on that, but that's like what you, what you that's might another, want to do. That's another stream, incentivizing. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. That's another whole, whole stream. That's right. Yeah, for pools, sure. So we want to make sure that there's one output. So I guess, first of all, I want to make sure that there aren't zero outputs so okay. i'll just say like um this input data dot is empty uh well actually i want to say it's not empty i want to make sure it's not empty and if it is then i'll give back one of our dex error variants which is uh not created yet so this one is going to be um user is trying to make an order but didn't provide an order so we'll just call this like uh, no order provided. Okay. We'll Makes back. sense. All right. So now we know that there's at least one. Now we have to be sure that there aren't multiple because we want exactly one. Exactly so I'll say one. sure input data dot length. Oops. Equals one. And if not, then we'll give back a dex error which also doesn't exist yet. Mm -hmm. User provided too many outputs when making an order. Expected exactly one. So this probably feels very similar to like creating your frame errors. Too many outputs. That's a little bit of a vague name, but we'll, we can think of a better, more dexier one later on. Uh, too many nice. All right. Okay, so we validated that it's one exactly. Yeah, so now we know we have the right number of outputs from this transaction. Now we have to make sure that it's actually an order. We don't want this thing to be like making spawning a crypto kitty or yeah. minting money or something like that. And so this is uh, where we'll call some of those methods from the dynamic typing utility that I was looking at earlier, where we have that like uh, four byte type identifier. So I'll just say like mm. let order equal uh, input data. Whoops. 
Question comes from the chat from Kay. Can you speak to the insure bang uh, that we use so commonly? Um, asking if it is essentially equivalent to the solidity require method. Yeah, they're similar. They're similar. Yep, they're pretty similar. This is a Rust macro. That's what the bang is for. And it just, yeah, makes sure that this uh, constraint is true or this criteria is true. And if not, exits early it, with this error. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I'm actually- Yeah, you'll, uh, you'll see him quite a bit though. So it's a good observation. Yeah. I'm very solidity noob, but I think it's similar to require. <laughs> So it's, it's safe to uh, index directly into our input data here because we've already made sure that there's exactly one. You wouldn't exactly. want to do something like this before you've like done these bounds checking because okay. if yeah. you go out of bounds, you're going to panic and that's going to make your chain docile. No, no, no. So here we call this extract method and okay. extract exists because... Uh, of the dynamic typing, basically. This input yep. zero is a thing called dynamically typed data, and that struct has a method called extract. And so what we're gonna do is extract out the value into a strong type. And you can see my Rust analyzer gives me this thing that says like, hey, I don't know what type this is supposed to be. And that's because dynamically typed data can be extracted out into any type. It, we, we use this exact same method for when we are extracting coins and crypto kitties and amoebas and proofs of existence and whatever mm -hmm. else. So we have to just give it a type hint. I can either do it here uh, by saying order, or I can do it with a turbo fish over here. Whoops. Ah. Order. And it's gonna, we're gonna have some problems with our generics now. So yeah, you know, remember order is generic in some type V, the verifier. Yeah. And so this is the part where we're about to start going down into trait hell, which you'll also see in frame to do fix the generic, but I'm going to avoid the temptation to make the compiler happy until I've sketched out the rest of the sure. reasoning here. Okay. So we've validated our output. We know that it's the right type. We know that there's the right number of them. Now we're going to do the inputs and there's no specific number of inputs we want. We just want to make sure that however many they are, they're all coins of the right type and they all add up to the, um, the offer amount basically. So I'll just do, I like to, Andrew does some like very sexy, uh, like functional programming style stuff here. And I just, it always takes me forever to get it right. So I'm just going to do this like <laughs> so imperatively. <laughs> Total collateral is zero. We'll I'll give it a it. Yeah. <laughs> and then we're just going to for loop through these. I'll just say like for input in input data. You know, my like Java and Python background is just like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's showing. Now. It's showing. <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> so, um, okay. So the first thing we want to do is similar to what we did here. We want to extract this input and make sure it's a coin of the right type. Yep. So we'll do input dot ex uh, extract. Um, and we're going to need the turbo fish again. So I'll just say coin again, you know, we're going to need to specify what coin and be generic over, you know, um, all these different kinds of coins and blah, blah, blah. So we're going right. to, we're going to get to that. We're focusing on the non-generic parts right now. So once we know that it's a coin of the right type, then we can just increase, uh, our total collateral plus equals, coin dot value and that value method comes from that cash trait that i showed you earlier yep yeah that makes sense to me all right so we now we know the total amount of collateral that the user provided and so finally we can ensure that the total collateral equals the um order dot uh offer amount hmm. and if not then we'll give back our dex error which is insufficient collateral. Which you've That's already created. That's one we did think of. Amazing. All right, I got one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so this line, just to recap, this line says, if I offer to trade 10 Joshi coin for five Lauren coin and I put up some collateral, maybe I put up five Joshi coin and one Joshi coin and two Joshi coins, that only adds up to eight. It doesn't cover the 10 that I offered. And so this transaction will fail with insufficient collateral. Yeah. Um, you might consider doing something like this, saying as long as there's more than enough collateral, but uh, it leads to edge cases that you need to, to be careful of. You, you can't assume that the offer amounts add up to the same thing as um, all the collaterals. And so to keep it simple and uh, less error prone, I like to just make sure it adds up perfectly. Okay. Yeah. Um, Aaron so. also did not love us conflating Python and Java, but you know what? 
He's oh yeah, they have lots of difference. Yeah, they have of lots course. of differences. No, <laughs> totally acknowledged, but they're both imperative, and they would both love this. Uh, <laughs> let all that we were talking <laughs> exactly. We were just using yeah. that as a new, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I bet actually Python has some nice uh, like iterator methods too that I also never learned. So. <laughs> Okay, let's see where we are compile-wise. I think we're going to get a whole bunch of generic-related stuff, but if there's anything else, we'll deal with that first, and then we'll tackle we'll those. In sure. Generics. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. V's expected one generic argument, not found in scope. Uh, oh, okay. Hey, that's one we can fix. Sure. Uh, okay. So, and at that, we're going to get into the the generics. We're doing it. So. We're, yeah, we're down to 10 minutes, so here here we go right on ooh, into it. Ooh, just, rapid fire, folks. Let's do it. Oh, he's going to commit. Um, All right. Commit gosh. this. Yep. Sketched logic. Of but get hygiene, but order. he's committed to. We're impressed. Yeah, I like the commit pun, too. I committed to it. <laughs> so, okay. So here we go. We are finally going to make our order struct generic over two yep. coin types, which I'll call A and B, and we'll give them this trait bound cache. Great. Yeah. So now um, whenever I make an order, there's there's no longer just an order type. There's nope. many order types and they're parameterized in which two tokens we're trading. And we'll just say that by convention, I already have it in my comments, that token A is the yep. offer amount and token B is the ask amount. Okay. Uh, right. So uh, we can fix this to do now. And yep. our only goal here is that we have a unique four bytes for every single type. Okay. And so the way the way that I'm going to do this is I'm just going to um, make my list like, uh, how do I use the syntax again? I think it's like this. I'm going to do like uh, whatever. I think before I had order, so I'll start out similar. Okay. Um, o, R. Uh, but I'm going to use my last two bytes to uniquely okay. specify these the two, one the two coins. Okay. Yep. And so this one will be like, uh, oh, I have to uh, include my generics everywhere, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, right here. Oops. And then also here. A, B. Okay. And so what that means is that I can finally do something like A. And if you remember the cache trait uh, had, when we implemented cache, we give it this ID, which just happens to be a byte, which is exactly what I need right now. So I'm going to do A's ID and then B's ID. And okay. um, I want to, so hopefully that's clear. I wanted these yep. four bytes to be unique, including the generics. What I want to uh, say right now is note, we know this is error prone. When we first created this, we were dealing with palettes or pieces that were like, coin we just put c-o-i-n or yep. um you know k-i-t-y now that we're getting a little more realistic we're realizing how error prone this is and it's gonna get better okay it's gonna get better <laughs> to do, to do yeah. at viewers uh make Seems a like pr <laughs> i love it i love it great call to action yeah, this is this is I will say this is not an easy one. A better one would be to add that that table to the docs or finish up my decks after we run out of time. But yeah, if you're yeah, yeah. Level, that are yeah. add some complexity of, of yeah, the types of like, exactly. exchange. Yeah, exactly. All but right, I do so, like that. That's interesting. Yeah. Okay. So now we need to bring our, our all our generics down here to be his type verifier. Uh, actually, yeah. do we need verifier here? Let's just include and it. And if not, we'll, yeah. uh, we'll remove it. A has type cash. Uh, yeah. B has type cash. <laughs> Let's kind of think about what we're going to need here. because the, And then the other thing is this is a struct. So every time I add one of these generics, I have to use it in some field, but I don't actually have any fields. So we have to do phantom data. Love it. Yeah. So this is a Rust thing. I'm not going to dive into it now. It, it's no. interesting and you could probably learn a lot, but it's I, this isn't yeah. really the right... Uh, right place for it i don't know if i actually need all of these trait bounds here either i don't think oh. i need to know that those are cash let's just leave them and if i don't need them i'll remove them afterwards okay. Okay. um okay so now that we have yeah. make order generic we can make its implementation generic also and, okay uh, v a, B. So, so far, this is just plumbing, basically. Like, we did one kind mm -hmm. of interesting thing up here where we uh, 
you know, use the generic types to make uh, the UTXO data unique. But other than that, so far, we're just plumbing these right. generics, oh, plug VIB, in. all the way through the whole thing. And now we got down to the part that we finally actually cared about, which is um, this implement trade implementation, because this is where we're going to need to know some of these things. Yes. So when we're, remember, we, we had these unknown, it used to just be one, it was just the verifier. Now there's three of them because we added A and B in there. So we can finally actually fill in these uh, types here. Okay. A, B. So what, um, oh, I need another angle bracket. So what this is saying now is that we used to just okay. have a single make order type. Now yeah, make yeah. order has some generics and therefore we have a whole class of make order mm -hmm. types. And so when we go to add this thing to our runtime, we're going to have to fill in these generics and we're going to say, we want our decks to allow users to make orders between two specific tokens. So we're yep. just going to say like coin zero and coin one. Now, if your runtime has three tokens and you want to allow three trading pairs, that's totally fine. You can have make order Bitcoin Monero and make order Bitcoin ETH and make order ETH Monero and however many you want for however many sure. coins you have. But uh, we're just going to have have one for now. You'd have to explicitly and, write it out, though. OK, yeah, that makes yep, sense. Yep, exactly, exactly. And so this is, again, this is similar to instantiable palettes in frame where you can have more than one, but you hard code yeah. exactly how many there are. Yeah, it's yeah. also possible to do this a little bit more dynamically where um, instead of having like generic types, we just have fields that are like mm -hmm. the token IDs. And then we wouldn't have to have a new make order for every single pair. We could just have one and we could have users creating new dex pools at any moment they want dynamically. Okay. And neither one is right or wrong. It's just a matter of what you're trying to do in your runtime. If okay. you're trying to build a Uniswap thing where you can have all these different pairs, you probably want the more dynamic approach. If you're trying to build a runtime with exactly two coins and for some reason have a, a market mechanism between them, you probably want something like this where it's a little bit more um, okay. tightly constrained at the type level. So uh, okay. let's see. Did we... Ah, okay. So we no longer want to extract this into a coin just coin we actually want to extract this into a coin specifically of type a got it yeah so if you remember what we're doing here is adding up all the collateral yep. and our order by convention the offer amount was in token a so we have to make sure that the collateral is also in token a so that it can can back it of course and uh wow is that enough i really thought there was going to be more generic plumbing but let's see maybe that was enough uh clear compile oh yeah there's there's plenty more there's plenty more uh, parameter instruct order okay so this is where we need phantom data yeah no big deal there this one's a struct so i'll do uh i guess just call it whatever um phantom data of now i actually did use the verifier in a field this time so it doesn't have to go in phantom data but the other two do sure a and b Got it. Okay. So that's. That'll handle thing. that. Um, ah, okay. Now, mm. we, we doesn't like a, the way that we're deriving clone here because A and B don't implement clone. Um, so we, we have some options. We could just add trait bounds to make A and B implement clone, but we also can. Um, uh, what struct was that? Was that order? Make, make, order. make order. Okay. So for make order, we can just say like, all right. If you're going to be picky, then don't derive clone and debug. We'll just derive them our, or implement them ourselves. Yeah, sure. Impl clone for make order. Uh, oh, yep. We got to have all these generics for make order V, A, B. B. Okay. Uh, and then I'll let my editor fill in these missing methods. Oh, look, it even, uh, it even I think it even did the right thing with self.0. Oh, yeah, the phantom data. All right. Hopefully that'll Perfect. work. Impl debug. Ah, uh, now I don't want to use it from the standard place because mm -hmm. we're building to no STD here. So I actually want to do. Uh, oh, I would have thought that that was in the SP STD, but prelude, I should say, but maybe not. Uh, is it here? Where do I get that from? Ooh. Well, we can look at the stacks yeah 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 so this is the similar thing for substrate and it's in uh spstd format debug 
good. There it is. Okay. There it is. All right. All right. And so now we can implement yep. debug. Mm, yeah. For all right, we're gonna wrap up in one second here too. I just finished oh, this. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yep, and we need all of these generics again. As always, the for the Post verifiers. Finishing this out, I uh, yeah, I got to run to the airport. We um, have. I'm heading to Consensus in Austin, Texas. So if you're going to be there, come find me. I will be at the Polka Dot booth the whole time. Um, and who's all going to Consensus, you're asking? Yes, that is, I know you are, Aaron. And uh, we have the web 3 thon happening. Uh, and so Aaron and I both will be speaking up on stage, talking, doing some demos, talking about opportunities within our ecosystem. And yeah, if you want to build and hack, a great hackathon to participate in and yeah, we would love to love to see you there meet you um but if not then yeah go check out the web 3 thon also that's cool lauren i didn't know that you were going to to consensus very yeah. good yeah 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 we're stoked all right guys so we're getting we're getting down to it i've got one more it's going to need another trait bound that our coins can be put into storage that have utxo data and then i sense. believe that'll be the end of it uh, i think maybe i can put that here uh it, we'll, we'll see if this doesn't work i'm just going to end it and i'm going to push this branch and then oh um, i love that yeah you, yeah you then can. you guys can see it and i'll also tell you about another branch that i have which is where i was um kind of practicing this yep, yeah i, I was going to ask do we have one that's cleaner already. sure yes sure. i mean yes what um, this isn't the first so time you've done this <laughs> Yeah, no, it took a lot longer than one hour the first time. So, yeah, okay, I, I got to put that tra trait bound somewhere better, but we don't need to get derailed on it right now. So let me just show you this one. Um, yeah. Off Narrative Labs Tuxedo Branches, and mm -hmm. it's called Joshi Dex Hack. So this is the one that I wrote as I was preparing. So this one's Let's actually clo yeah. close to done. Yep. And so you can look and see everything that I did there. And then the other one, um, I'm just going to call this uh, Messy check in at end of seminar Perfect. uh to do viewers clean it up <laughs> i love that yes <laughs> and this branch what did i call this branch oh i'm right on main that was stupid i shouldn't be there <laughs> uh so we'll get check out um seminar live let's try to spell it right dex and then i'll i'll um push it there and then i'll yeah and then i'll sure. push it so you guys will be able to see also in addition to the one that I already have pretty awesome. much done. That'd be fun. Yeah. Before. Go ahead and go in there, compare, clean it up. Yep. There it is. Seminar live. Oh, I love okay, so, it. All right, Joshua, you'll let me know when someone goes in there and tackles it. Yeah. I'm really, I'm really hoping that you guys do. So, me too. all right. We can end my uh, share there. Thank you, Lauren, okay, for having me again two weeks in a row. Oh, are you kidding? Hey, this was awesome. Um, folks, thank you so much for joining us. I got to head to the airport. Joshi, always a joy to spend time with you. Uh, yeah, for sure. Me too. Before Same. then, I'll see you at PBA. Um, bye, folks. Yeah, have a have fun at consensus. <laughs> um, you know, thank you so much. I will see you all very soon. Bye. <laughs>